Thank you so much, band. Really, really appreciate you guys. It's so good to be back here to start the year just lifting up Jesus and focusing on Him. I wanted to speak a little bit about faith this morning. You know, we walk by faith and and not by sight, and this morning I'm preached by faith and not by sight. I copied the wrong notes onto my tablet. And so, I'm so expectant this morning that the Lord is going to meet with us and speak to us. Because it's 2024. I say just now, a sci-fi movie. Most of us, when we were kids, all of the sci-fi movies happened before 2024. You know, for those who watched Back to the Future, kind of Back to the Future was like in 2010 or or something ridiculous. That was the future in Back to the Future. We were way beyond the future. We're in the super future by now. And it's weird for me, but at the same time, it's beautiful how our, our humanness, we package, because let's be honest, the 1st of January 2024 is actually just a very arbitrary day. There's no reason why today couldn't have been the 1st of January, or next week could be the start of the year. It's just some random arbitrary day that marks the start of a new year for us, a new season. I need a new diary, a new calendar. It all starts on that year, and our, our lives are just framed around these things we call years. And yes, obviously, a year isn't arbitrary if you think of the, the, the sun's orbit, but where that year starts, that's a bit arbitrary. And so we start on the 1st of January, and most of us, we're wired this way to, you know, New Year's, who's got New Year's resolutions? Come on, let's be honest here. Who's got some New Year's resolutions for this New Year? A couple of us are nodding. How many of us have already broken our New Year's resolutions? Uh, still going strong, one week in. And it's this year thing, it, it starts, and it compartmentalizes our life into 70 or 80 or so different blocks. These blocks of, of one year, and we can sort of tackle one year at a time. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One year at a time, one month at a time, one week at a time, one day at a time. And it helps us just to block, to think, to start a new year, to think forward. And so as we're thinking of 2024, I think most of us have been thinking, what do I want to do in 2024? I wonder what 2024 holds in store for you. I wonder what your plans are for 2024, what your goals are for 2024. It's good to have them. It's good to have plans. It's good to have goals. My prayer for us is that 2024 would be a faithful year. I can take that a little bit further. I can say, what are your faith goals? What are you standing in faith for? For 2024. I want us to think a little bit about that this morning. And I want us to think at that sort of led by Luke 18. And there are a couple of things that happen in Scripture, in the Gospel specifically, in where we see Jesus walking. There are sort of three main ways in which we are taught through the, the New Testament, through the Gospels. The one is through the things that Jesus does, through His actions. The second one is through circumstances that happen around Jesus and how obviously Jesus reacts and responds to them, and He uses many of them as teaching moments. And then the third one is what we have here, parables, stories which Jesus tells. These aren't things which really happen, but they are stories that Jesus tells to illustrate a point. And so today we're going to look at one of these stories, one of these accounts. And in Luke 18, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show them that they should always pray and never give up. And so here's the story. There was a judge in a certain city who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman 
is driving me crazy. Husbands, you are not allowed saying that, okay? But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with the constant requests. Maybe she's nagging. And so Jesus tells the story of a woman who is nagging at the judge. Day in, day out, she's there all the time. She's saying, judge, you must help. Judge, you must help. And judge is like, no, just leave me. I'm busy. Eventually, he says, okay, I'm just going to do what I need to do to get this woman quiet. That's the story that Jesus tells her. And so Jesus goes a bit further in Luke 18 from verse 6, and he says, so learn a lesson from this situation, specifically from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God, so the point is God is not the unjust judge. God is the just judge. God is the righteous judge. God is wanting to do what is good and what is right. Don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? One of the reasons why we're praying in February is because God will give justice when we cry out to him. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. And then he has a little phrase which almost seems out of place, but puts in context the whole lesson that Jesus has told him. But when the Son of Man returns, or when Jesus says, when I come back, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? And so what Jesus does, by what this little sentence does, is sort of explains that Jesus has just said, this is what faith looks like. He just told them a story. He says, this woman must be an example of faith to you and to me. Where is the faith there? The faith is in the fact that she carried on knowing that the judge was able to help her. That if she could just get the judge's attention, enough of his attention, he will help. So this is a little picture of faith that Jesus holds before his disciples. He says to them, if you want to know what faith looks like, this is what faith looks like. So when I come back, how many of us are going to be found filled with faith? I don't know about you, if you maybe took a little bit of time sort of in the last week or two or so and looked back over 2023. Once again, these weird, almost random chapters that we have in our lives based upon a date, 2023 and now 2024. How many of us look back over 2023 and what did we say 2023 was? A good year, a hard year, a challenging year, an exciting year. Many of us, obviously, a year is a long time. There's stacks that happens in a year. But if you have to sum up the year, what happened? My prayer, my hope is that as we gather together at the end of 2024 and we look back, I'm hoping we can say this was a phenomenal year. This was an extraordinary year. Why was it an extraordinary year? It was because it was beyond ordinary. 2024 was a hard year. It was a difficult year. Maybe there were times when I wanted to cry and I wanted to give up. But as I look back on 2024, this was a year filled with miracles. This was a year filled with faith. This was a year where I saw God not only deposit faith in my heart, but answer that faith and faith and realize that faith. And so when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth? We have faith. See, one of the pictures that we see here is we can carry on to 2024, like 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020. Whenever you came to know Christ, and there were beautiful moments, I'm sure, all along the way in those years, and there were hard moments. We can get to the end of 2024, and 2024 could have been another year. Another year where God was there. Another year where God was with my family. Another year where God comforted me and God provided for us. And all of those things would be great. But I'm trusting that 2024 will be more than that. 
Then 2024 won't just be a year where it would be a year of being an ordinary Christian. But 2024, we would look back and we say, we did some things in 2024. 2024 saw God deliver and set some people free. People's lives are different and changed because of 2024. Visions and dreams have come into pass. New ministries have been birthed. New plans have been given rise to. God was in 2024. And if I could have 2024 over again, I would. Because I met with God in 2024. God changed things in 2024. There's dreams that I've had since child that are becoming to pass in 2024. For us as Christians, for some reason, if we talk about, if I was to ask you, what are you standing in faith for in 2024? I think it's weird for me in, in the conversations we have, our, our questions get hot. It's like, ooh. And now it's a spiritual question, and we, our confidence goes a little bit. We're not so sure what we want to answer. We see that in prayer meetings all the time. Many of you will, heard, will have heard me say this, kind of. It, it, I'm going to pray every Monday in, in February, and I want to invite you to come to the prayer meeting. Even if you don't know how to pray or what to pray, just be there. That would be great already and is. So I want to say that before I say what I'm about to say. Because one of the things that does confuse me a little bit is not when people come for the first time or so when they're still figuring out, but people who've been coming often and come to prayer meetings and they come to prayer meetings. And I'm like, it's great that you're here. I love having you here. But you know that you can contribute in the prayer meeting. You can actually pray too in the prayer meeting. And then in the conversation, people are like, but I don't know what to pray. It's because I, I need to be spiritual when I'm praying. I, I need to have all of the answers because I need to pray according to God's will. And so there's a beautiful parallel, a, a twin to faith, which we find in Scripture. If I was to ask you, what is your faith for 2024? You're probably going to give me two or three. What are the things that you are standing in faith for for this year? You're not going to have a very long list. There may be some deep and significant things that are great on that list. If I was going to ask you, what are you hoping for for 2024? I think we could sit here all day talking about the things that are going to flow out of your mouth. And Hebrews says to us so beautifully, watch this, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of the things we haven't seen. You see, faith and hope are intertwined. They're these two beautiful twins. And, and faith for some of us is this intimidating twin, but hope is the easy twin. Hope is the friendly twin. If I was going to ask you, what are you hoping for today? That's an easy question to answer. What are you hoping for for your family for 2024? What are you hoping for in your career? What are you hoping for in the decisions you make? That's easy. I'm hoping it goes well. I'm hoping it prospers. I'm hoping that Maybe I find a wife if I haven't have a wife yet. If I've got a family, my wife and I grow closer. I'm hoping that my children do well at school. I'm hoping that my family comes to salvation. I'm hoping, and hope is easy. And Scripture says hope and faith are rooted in the same thing. Faith is what makes the hope real. So this morning, what I'm wanting to encourage us a little bit is to trust God to find ways to have faith for 2024 born in hope. And so what I say to people when come to a prayer meeting, they say they don't know what to pray. Here's a simple thing, what to pray. What do you hope for? Let's say we're praying about small group, coming together before small group to pray about small group. What do you hope happens in small group tonight? Pray for that. What do I mean when I say I'm standing in faith? We'll look at that in a moment now. Well, that just means that I believe that God can do what I hope for. Many people say, but how do I know that's according to God's will? And, you know, I must pray and faith must be aligned with the word. And yes, it must be. If you've been following Jesus for sort of any period of time, the chances are pretty good that you've got a good idea of the things that he is about. But when you're praying for a small group or when you're praying for a 
for the year ahead or you're praying, praying for people's salvation, you have a really good idea. You don't have to have all of the details. You can pray with confidence and with faith, and God will show you when you're wrong, and it's okay because you can just say no. Let's just change this, okay? I'm hearing your prayer. I'm seeing your heart. I'm not going to answer it that way. I'm going to answer it this way. See, faith is the reality of what we hope for. If we don't hope, we can't have faith. What is it that you are hoping for for 2024? What are you hoping for this year? I'll tell you what I'm hoping for for you. I'm hoping for you to grow as a disciple. I'm hoping for you to, Scripture says, prosper in all things and to be in health even as your souls prosper. Hoping for your family to prosper, your career to prosper, your friendships and every one of your relationships to grow deeper. I'm hoping for you to walk according to God's purposes for your lives. And I've got faith for that. What does that mean? I mean God can actually do what I hope needs to be done. I'm hoping that we would reach people and nations, generations, continue to invest into them. Manton's busy planning a trip to Botswana towards the end of February. If you want to go with that, you can speak to him. We're going to be going to Zimbabwe a couple of times this year after my trip there last year. Just some great connections. We're going to be sending teams to a variety of different places. I'm trusting God. I'm putting my faith out that you will go on a mission somewhere this year. Not the person sitting next to you or behind you. You are going to go on a mission this year. I'm trusting God that this year we are going to make disciples like we haven't been making disciples in such a long time. I was speaking to someone recently who said that they were spending time with people from another church and they said they follow Jesus, but as they were just engaging with them, they're like, I don't know if you actually know Jesus. We're going to make disciples of Jesus like we haven't made disciples in a long time. We're going to Raise up leaders who are going to step into communities and to step into their sphere and influence them with the gospel. You're going to see people empowered to step out with the knowledge of the spur of the Lord upon them. I trust God is going to do that in 2024. Not in 2034, then as well, but this year. We're going to plant churches and we're going to plant small groups. I'm going to shake some of you now. You know what I've got faith for? I've got faith that you are going to lead a small group this year. Not the person sitting next to you. Not the person behind you. You are going to lead a small group this year. I've got faith that you are going to bring your gift. I've got faith that right now, for some of us that aren't leading, all of those reasons that jump into our mind why I can't lead a small group, I've got faith that God can help you overcome those. I've got faith that you can step in, that you can prosper in your family, that you can prosper in your career, you can prosper in your relationships, and you can prosper in ministry at the same time. That the one doesn't have to break away from the other one, but the contrary, that they feed into one another. That your ministry is going to make your family stronger and your marriage stronger. That your family is going to prosper. I've got faith that God is going to do those things in your life this year. Romans 15, speaking about hope. Hope is the, the starting point for our faith. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. I love this. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Confident hope. Not wavering hope. Not wave that disappoints. Not hope that disappoints. Not hope that doesn't come to pass. But hope that is fused with faith. Hope that a little bit like Abraham we see here in Romans 4. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. He had confident hope. See, God gave Abraham a promise. That promise was a seed of hope. Abraham believed God. We see this here. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. And right here, I think, is probably one of the best summaries of faith you will ever find. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. 
Do you want to know what faith is? That's faith right there. That God is able to do what God has said. The same we see in, um, in his wife Sarah in Hebrews, I don't think it's Hebrews 111, it's probably Hebrews 11. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. Watch this. She believed that God would keep his promise. Phrase that a little bit differently. She believed that God could fulfill her hope. She believed that. She believed that that which God had placed in her heart, that which he had spoken to her, he can do. it. And so as we head into 2024, what are you hoping for for 2024? What are you hoping for? Can I be just a, a little bit, I don't quite know if this is quite naughty, but maybe just a little bit naughty. Why don't you hope for more? Why are you limiting God to that? I'm, I'm hoping my, my grandmother finally comes to salvation. Amen. With you, I hope your grandmother finally comes to salvation. But what about your whole family line? I'm hoping my, my business is able to sign just two or three contracts this year so that we can just kind of begin to go into that profit area and begin to step in. Okay, great. But why only two or three? Why not five or six or ten? Why are we limiting God? I'm, I'm hoping that my family, we can really bond well. Amen. So with you. But why not have a greater expectation, hope that God will do what only God can do? There's no reason why we can't look back at the end of 2024 with a big, massive gathering and look back and say 2024 was amazing. I've never had a year like 2024. I've never had a year where God did what He did in 2024. But it started with hope. At the start of this year, I hoped for A, B, C, D, and E. Guess what? God did A, B, C, D, and E by February. And then we still had another 10 months left, and God went beyond it because He is a God who goes beyond if we will just find faith in us. Are we willing to be a little bit like the woman who goes to the judge and says, listen, I'm going to plead my case. An unjust evil judge, how much more can we go to a just, good God who wants to hear us? Obviously, it starts in prayer. He says, Jesus says, when I come back, will I find faith on this earth? I hope and pray that He finds faith in your heart, that He finds faith in my heart. He finds us willing to knock at the door all the time and not give up. Not because we're nagging, but because we believe that God is able. And not is He able, and this is the difference between God and the evil judge. God is willing. God is willing. God is willing to go beyond. I want to challenge you, if you think of 2024, have faith for 2024. What are you trusting God for? What are you standing in faith for, for 2024? That should be a long list. Because 356 days is a long time and God can do a lot in a year. Hebrews 11 verse 6. It is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. Do you know what the corollary of this verse is? It is possible to please God with faith. We can't please God without faith, but if we have faith, we can definitely be pleasing to God. So what are those things that we are standing in faith for? I should preach with my notes, without my notes more often. It goes quicker. What are we standing in God in faith for? What are we trusting God for? What is it that is stirring in our heart that we're saying, God, I hope for this year. Lord, I hope this year you will. God, I hope this year this will change. God, I hope this year. 
And then what is faith? Faith is when we fuse God's character and God's willingness with our hope. That faith begins to come to pass and God moves and He answers. He says, yes, He breathes over it. So what is it that you are trusting God for for 2024? What is it that you're standing in faith for? I want to challenge you, stand in faith for all of those things that are important to you. Do that. But trust God to say, I want to stand in faith for things that go beyond me. Silly example, I can go through this year and trusting God for it to go well with my family and go with, well with my kids at school, for our, our budget to make it every month and to have a nice holiday at the end of the year and, and sort of get to the end of the year and really trust God for all of that and not affect anybody's life in that, not extend the kingdom at all. Well, I can say, God, I'm trusting you for that, but I'm trusting you to be able to see my children's school, for example, I want to see multitudes in that school come to Christ. I want to see people growing in their giftings and walking in purpose with God. So I want to challenge you. Yes, let's have our, our faith goals for me and for my family. and That's important. We mustn't neglect that. But how about we, once we've got the dose down, we say, okay, but how can I go beyond me? What am I trusting God for that's going to shift other people's lives and probably isn't going to change me? I would have been completely okay without this. But they wouldn't have been. That's one of the reasons why the widows and the orphans are so much on God's heart. Because you and I would have been completely okay without someone reaching out to the orphan. But the orphan wouldn't have been okay. And so God wants us to step beyond me being okay to stepping into someone else's world and bringing them in as well so that they can also grow and be okay. That which is meant to take six years to have, oh, six years, maybe God can do it in six months this year. He does miracles. Maybe it's meant to take six months, maybe He can do it in six weeks. Maybe it's meant to take six weeks, He can do it in six days. Why aren't we trusting God to do supernatural in our midst? I would hate for us to come to the end of 2023 and we've just had an ordinary year. I'd be disappointed. And I think God would be disappointed. Because God doesn't want us to live ordinary lives. He wants us to live extraordinary lives. He wants us to live faith-filled lives. And so, yes, maybe that's a little bit uncomfortable. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being uncomfortable as I follow Jesus, because I see his disciples were uncomfortable all the time. He pulled them into uncomfortable spaces, and he asked them to do uncomfortable things. But then he also said, when you lose your life for my sake, you find it. And I know it's when we step into the uncomfortable that we find which truly matters. We find what's true. We find what's real. We find why God created us to be. And so in just a moment, we're going to have communion together. James chapter 2, in just as we end of this, it's great having faith. It's great having a piece of paper. And I encourage you to do that. Take your note app on your phone or a piece of paper is even better and jot down some things. Say, God, this year I'm trusting you for. And then you put them down there. Make a list of things, and if that's too hard, God, I don't know what to stand in faith for. Well, God, what am I hoping for this year? That's easy for us. If I can dream, what would I hope for? I'm hoping for these things. Some of it seemingly completely insignificant, but it would be special to me, so I'm going to hope for that. Do that. God cares about those little things in your life. Hope for them too. I'm not saying hope only for the big and the powerful out there. Hope for the small things as well. God is into those little details. Remember, remember one of the ways in which kind of I, I really learned this? One of the first weddings I ever did, I'd seen God just over and over in weddings. It's just amazing how God comes and He just comes through when it comes to wedding time. 
Don't have money for a ring. I didn't have money for a ring. God provided money for a ring. Kind of when we just set our heart to it, God is in this marriage thing. And I remember the bride was going to get, obviously get married, and it was just a week before, and we were talking about some final arrangements. And I said, have you ordered your wedding, the weather yet? It was like a bit of a weird thing to say. And she said, yes, 23 and a half degrees, partly cloudy. And back then, I had a little red Corsa, and it had a um, thermometer on the dashboard on the left here. And I remember as I drove into the wedding venue on the Saturday to do the wedding, as I parked my car, my eye caught the little thermometer in the middle console, 23.5 degrees. See, God is into those little details. We can pray for them. We can trust, especially when it comes to weddings. But everywhere, God is in the details. Trust those things. What am I hoping for, for this year? And the starting point is we have to write, God says that, you know, I love this analogy. He says, nobody goes to war without figuring out, can I win this war? You don't begin to build a house without asking, can I finish the house? Otherwise, everyone's going to laugh at you, he says. So first, you need to do those calculations. What am I hoping for? Write them down. These are the things that I'm hoping for. I'm going to think through this a little bit. And then where does the calculation come in? Then take a step back. Say, okay, what is it going to take? I said just now, and I'm going to be bold about it this year, and I'm going to get on your button about it this year, and I don't care if we're uncomfortable about it. You're going on a mission this year. So maybe just quickly, if you don't have a passport yet, maybe a really good thing to do tomorrow morning would be to apply for your passport. You're going to need your passport. Otherwise, you're going to miss out this year. I'm going to start applying for my kids' passports the next I go to home affairs often for marriages. I'm going to go apply for my kids' passports because they need to start going on international missions. So I'm hoping that everyone in this room and others go on a mission this year. I'm just hoping. I'm trusting God for it. I'm putting my faith. What does that also mean? Well, that probably means I need to organize a bunch of missions. It means I need to do a bunch of missions training. It means we need to prepare people to go on missions. So it's great saying, I hope for this. But I need to understand what we see here in James chapter 2, verse 17. So you see, faith by itself is not enough. It is so great having a piece of paper. This is what I hope for. And you know what? I believe God can do all of these things that I hope for. But there's one more ingredient that needs to come in. And that ingredient is my initiative. See, unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. I say, how can you show me? me your faith if you don't have good deeds. I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God, good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? And so as we head into 2024, I want to encourage us, let's be people who are filled with hope for 2024. Let us be filled with faith for 2024 because we believe that God can answer and do everything that we are hoping for. But let's also ask God, what initiative do I need? So on a missions, as an example, missions cost money. Some of you may have missed that, but missions cost money because you need to buy petrol, you need to buy plane tickets, and you need to pay for passports and visas and all of those things, and you need to pay food and accommodation, and then, and then, and then, and the list goes on. And so I've been on many missions in my years. Yaku, sitting at the back, has probably been on more. Started as a first-year student at university. Most of us have been there. You don't have a lot of money in that time in your life with a bunch of other students in university. In all of these years, I have never seen somebody put their heart out to go on a mission, to be serious about going on the mission, and not have finances to be able to go. Never seen it. Crazy stories of friends literally arriving 
at their residence room at Verse Varsity, opening the door, and there's an envelope out under the door with the money for the mission. Variety of different things. And typically what they would have done is that morning they would have gone and they would have washed a bunch of cars. I don't know what a car wash costs nowadays, 50, 60 bucks. You need to wash a lot of cars to buy a plane ticket to India. Washing cars is not going to get the plane ticket to India. But if I'm doing something, it is amazing how God comes alongside that. And then suddenly the envelope is there. The envelope isn't there if I'm just lying on the bed all day. But the envelope is there when I get up and I say, God, I don't quite know how I'm going to do this. God, I don't know how I'm going to feed these orphans. But I'm going to start feeding an orphan. I'm going to start feeding out of a person. I don't know how I'm going to disciple this business, this company, all of these people on this campus around me, but I'm going to start discipling one person. It's amazing to see how when we step out, we have faith with good deeds, how God breathes on those good deeds, and suddenly it multiplies. And so this year, let's give feet to our faith. Let's step out in faith. Let's be bold in our faith. Let's have a list of all of these things that God's going to do in 2024. I'm full of faith that if we do that and we get to the end of 2024, we're going to be astounded at what God has done. We're going to look back and say, wow, can you believe God did this and this and this? I never thought he would, but look at this. It actually happened. That didn't turn out the way. It didn't happen the way I thought it would. It doesn't look like I thought it would, but it's better. Because God came and he took control. I'm going to ask the ushers to hand out the, the elements for us. We're going to have communion together. Hey, look at that. Look how early I'm finished. I'm going to leave my notes at home more. What are we trusting God for this year? What are we putting our faith out for? What are we saying, God, I'm wanting you to do this. I'm hoping that you will do this year. Not only am I hoping, I believe you can do it. And Jesus, I'm going to find a way to step out towards this. God, I'm going to trust you to do something different. I don't want an ordinary 2023. Maybe you want an ordinary 2023 you can have an ordinary 2020. I don't want an ordinary 2023. Four, 23 is gone, yes. Past tense, 2024. It's like, I don't know if you guys ever made this mistake. You know, at school where you have to write the date at the top corner of every page. Normally by like April, my clock would have switched over. Up until April, I'm still writing the previous year's date. But like now, 2024. I don't want an ordinary 2024. I hope you don't want an ordinary 2024. I want an extraordinary 2024. It shocked me the other day when I realized, you know, if we divide our lives up into these chapters of years, I'm probably over halfway, as hard as it is to admit. And as good. I am. I don't want any ordinary years left in the few that I've got. At some stage, Jesus is going to come back, which would be amazing. Failing that, I'm over halfway. At least of my productive years. I want them to be extraordinary years. I want them to be years full with faith. I want to come back at the end of this year and say, Jesus is amazing. We're having a, a bit of a leaders weekend next weekend, and one of the things I'm going to speak to the leaders about... The, I realize, and while the, the elements are going around, I can maybe share this with us, ask you to pray into it. You see, there are a couple of things that are so important, and we, a bunch of different people in church, we want everyone to belong, to feel that this is their home. And some of us, we feel we belong, we feel loved when we can sit around a table and we have a meal together and we share together. Some of us are more inclined that way. And we have our bride together at the end of the month and we stand next to the bride fire and we have a conversation. Some of us are, we love those moments. Most of us are probably in a spectrum between these two, but you hear me out too. Some of us love those moments. Some of us, and I probably lean more to this side a little bit, I feel love and I feel I belong when I'm part of something, when we're doing some stuff together. 
Some of us, the doing thing intimidates us. We just love the being together. Some of us love the being together, and the doing stuff intimidates us. There's a spectrum there. And so in the last few years coming out of lockdown, we've put a lot of effort on the being together. We're going to continue being together. Something that we're going to spend a bit more time on is doing together. And so we're going to go on missions together. And we're going to find ways to serve the community around us together. And everybody, let me just put this out there just for you as well. We're not expecting everybody to do everything all of the time by any stretch of the imagination. Everyone doesn't have to do everything, but there's going to be moments where we're doing stuff. Even this morning, some guys went through the shelter. I see their back and they brought some of the shelter. Guys, we're going to be going to the shelter. and We're going to be doing stuff together. It's going to be a lot more doing as, together with the being this year. Trust in God that can I go clay? Thank you. Did anybody else get get skipped? I want to say pass over, but that would be a poor joke. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tiro, for at least laughing. Let's have faith for 2024. Let's walk out of these doors here with the spring in our step, saying this year is going to be hard, it's challenging. There's a mountain we need to climb. I don't know what it means. I want to ask you, pray with us. We want to ascend the hill of the Lord, Psalm 24. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? We sang it earlier as well. He who has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul to an idol. What does that mean to us in 2024 in Pretoria? Not 100% sure. Figuring that out, but I know I want to climb that hill and stand in the Lord's presence. I've climbed some hills in my life. Enough to know that it's hard work and it's tiring. You get to the top and you need to breathe out a little bit. Normally a couple of times on the way to the top, you need to stop and you need to breathe. You need to have a water break. It's hard work. No one said it's going to be easy. But then you hit the top of the mountain and you look down. And in this case, you stand in the Lord's presence. Don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we're going to do that this year. So pray with us for wisdom. Say, God, how do we do this? God, how do we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the community and the communities all around us? Every single one of us, we live in community. We work in community. How do we take the gospel to them? So that they may grow in the love and the grace of Jesus. Let's stand together. We want to pray. Jesus, this morning, Lord, we are just so amazed that you have given us 2024. It's a gift, Lord. This is not just the day the Lord has made. This is the year the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. We're going to be glad in it, Lord. And so, Jesus, right now, we bring our every hope, Lord. Everything that we are hoping for, for 2024, we bring it to the cross, Lord. There where your blood was shed, and your body was broken. There where you demonstrated your heart towards us, Lord. And we pray, Jesus, that you would infuse faith into our hope, Lord. Lord, we choose to believe that that which we hope to happen you are able to make it happen, Lord. And the cross made it possible for it to happen. So we pray for every family member and every friend, every colleague who does not know you yet, Jesus. We hope that in 2024, they will meet you. Lord, all of the dreams that are hidden in our hearts, Lord, we hope that in 2024 they will begin to come to pass. Every dream for our family, Lord, 
every dream for our friends, every dream for our life, every dream for our purpose. All of those hopes, we lay them down at the cross of Jesus Christ and we say, you are able. You're able, Lord. We choose to believe in your goodness. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would show us what the step is that we can take because of our faith, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for your body which was broken, torn to pieces, Lord, so that 2024 may be a prosperous year. Your body was torn to pieces so that we may prosper in all things and be in health, Lord, even as our souls prosper. Let's eat together. And not only was your body broken, Lord, your blood was poured out. So we stand before you with our hands open. We know that who can ascend the hill of the Lord, but he has clean hands. Lord, our hands aren't clean. My hands aren't clean, Lord. But it's your blood that makes them clean. And so as we head into 2024, God, I pray that we would know we always have clean hands because they are washed by your blood, Jesus. Your blood, which is stronger than any sin, Lord. Which washes whiter and purer than any stain, Lord. God, we hope that in 2024 we would see the blood of Jesus washing and cleansing in ways we could never have imagined, Lord. Let's drink together. And so, Lord, thank you that faith stirs in our hearts, Lord. Lord, faith for ministries and faith for businesses, Lord. Faith for relationships, faith to overcome, Lord. Faith for victory. That you birth hope in us and that hope would give rise to faith. God, we pray that this family, our family, Lord, we would be known at the end of 2024 as a family that's filled with faith, that Jesus, when you return, you will find faith right here in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen.